week's episode of Area Code comes to you from High Rise Estate in Nairobi, a neighborhood that was constructed back in the early 1980s and was apparently initially meant for the residents of Kibra in the government's first ever slum upgrading development project. But decades later, the face and image of High Rise has changed drastically and Area Code will be giving a voice to the residents here to air out some of their concerns. Which estate do you decide to live in that is closest to the country's largest referral hospital? Is easily accessible to many top class institutions of higher learning and is just mere meters from the Nairobi Central Business District. I raise Iko uh, in a Naiza Sema Iko in a central place where you can access town easily by walking and coming back. You can go to Langata easily by walking and coming back. Uh na malls mingi recreational facilities. Yes, that estate is high rise, located off Mbagadi Road. From the great contrast of the new age neighborhood, dotted with both old and new buildings alike. It's a nice place to live and uh, because it is near town. To a crisis that is nearly devaluing the houses here, High Rise's story is one of desire, despair and perhaps destruction. I begin High Rise's story as told through the eyes of this man, senior citizen Amos Wopicho. You see, Amos was here when it all began more than 33 years ago. He, alongside a few other Kenyan laborers with the help of an Indian construction company, helped build High Rise Estate back in 1984. High Rise was here. But soon enough, the thicket would pave way for the construction of apartments. The construction took place in two phases and was initiated by the National Housing Corporation. The stream he is talking about is this one, which flows from the periphery of the Nairobi Dam, which neighbors the estate on the southern side. Amos was the man who painted the houses in High Rise Estate. The National Housing Corporation outsourced construction to an Indian based company where Amos was working. The structures built here were mainly either one or two bedroom houses. To differentiate the two, Amos tells us they were instructed to paint the one bedroom houses with a white outline to them while two bedroom houses were to have an orange outline. The estate has been subdivided into nine zones, each issued with a letter from the alphabet which go from block A to block J. The A houses have five blocks, B have five blocks as well, while C has three blocks, D houses have eight blocks, E has four, 
F has the least with just two blocks, G has six, while H has the most number of blocks with 12 structures to its name. J has five, and in total, High Rise Estate has 50 blocks, housing about 10,000 people. Once construction was complete, the intention of the National Housing Corporation was to sell the houses through their outright sale option. One bedroom houses went for 250,000 shillings with an initial down payment of 10% of the cost price, while two bedroom houses were sold off for 300,000 shillings with homeowners required to deposit 30,000 shillings as initial payment. What is surprising is that High Rise Estate was initially meant to house residents of the expansive Kibra slums as part of the then government's efforts to accord its citizens affordable housing. But the sale of the homes by National Housing Corporation was anything but affordable. Katio kupata 25, ongeli usa kira kitu, nechafika bado. The corporation's unrealistic high sale costs could not be afforded by the many slum residents who live on less than a dollar a day. This forced the National Housing Corporation to sell their homes to other financially abled individuals. And even though years later, the government would kickstart renewed efforts towards building better houses for the slum residents, unknown to many is that high-rise estate will perhaps stand at the annals of history as the first ever government-initiated slum upgrading development project, even though the intended beneficiaries never ever got a chance to move into the houses here. There's a building where they have, they have built a Riara University. That place was supposed to be to have to be clinic or school for Kibera people. But eventually they they built Riara University there, which shocked to so many people. Most of the homeowners in High Rise Estate have, however, rented out their houses to serve the sprouting Nairobi population seeking affordable housing. Renting a one-bedroom house in this estate could cost you approximately 15,000 Kenya shillings. Sasa watu wakanunua kaanza kukotesea watu. Mpaka sasa wanausa watu wakitaka, tunesa kuhuzia. Sasa simetoa kwa mia tatu, sasa ni milioni tatu. Na saizi kupata milioni tatu ni raizi kuliko hiyo mia tatu. Hivi sasa tukizunguza. Some of the houses in high rise, especially in blocks A and B, were bought by the National Social Security Fund and sold off to its members who have since erected walls and provided themselves with accommodation. But as we are soon about to find out, life in high rise, though relatively affordable, is not as rosy as many of those who chose this place to be home had hoped it would be. At least history amaji itutatulie so that high rise can go back to its normal status of uh, the prime estate then and then the roads are bad we don't know what to do or whom to approach to, to repair the roads these roads because they, are, they look very bad